more than anything, what drives my practice is curiosity. It's to be able to learn about a place that I don't know, about a subject, about a country, about a community that I've never been and that I'm curious to go and, and explore. Often that starts uh, a first trip. The idea comes and then is created with the entire community. We all live with our own frame of reference and suddenly when you move to complete different context. Well, people see the world from their point of view and I think as an artist it's my role to understand from which point they're seeing it, from which perception, and I think that's a great way to change the way we see the world. Well, the story with Teja Chapi, the maximum security prison in California, is a very crazy story. It's a friend of mine who called me and said, hey, you got to do a project in, in jail. And said, hey, so I called this guy uh, who works uh, a lot with prison and with prisoners, and he called the governor. And when he called the governor, he told him that there was this artist called Gerard from France, and the governor said, what's his name? Is that the same artist who photographed me and filmed me for his project at SF MoMA? Yeah, give him full clearance for all prison and jail in California. So then he called me and was like, ah, this can't be true. I mean, um, I was like, all right, so if it's really true, can we find all the facilities that have a ground in concrete? So they sent me photos uh, just on, from Google Earth. Just look in terms of architecture first. And then the guy said, whoa, this one is actually Teha Chapi, it's a maximum security four. They're not used to do any kind of projects like that. They, haven't, they don't even have a program for artists or anything. You have full clearance, so when do you want to go? So I went there two days later and then the project started. And I have to say that it was kind of this kind of project that you don't see coming, I had no idea. Do you know about the project or not much? No. They didn't show you? Look, we, we, we're gonna paste the, the, you know, the yard who's right there, you know, where there's the basketball court. I'll take photos on the board, and that would, won't take long, you know, like a couple of minutes, but then after you go in the other room there, and that's where you'll share your story. Sounds like a plan. All right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, looking at me. There's the moment of the photo, which goes really fast for me, but it's the moment where I get to know each one of them and each one of the person I photograph. But the photo doesn't really take long, because I know the photo is just one step of the process to get to the pasting. So you need people, you need help. It's something that I can't do by myself. And I love that process, because then you involve the prisoners, you involve the team, you involve the guards, the, you know, everyone suddenly comes and come together for the purpose of making that giant puzzle together. And then there's the point of view, which is the final photo. And then there's the sharing of that image. And in that sharing of that image, I wanted people to be able to hear every single story of those people who were on the photo and who helped paste, and there's also victims. So right away it selected by themselves, some of them left and some others stayed, a people that often were uh, young because of a crime they did, uh, not necessarily a, a hard crime, but at the time there was a law in California called the three strike, where you do three minor crime, like you steal a phone, you steal a car, or, or you get into a fight and you go to jail for life. I'm incarcerated in uh, the HPP prison for a crime that I committed when I was a kid, uh, six years old. I received 23 years and eight months. I've been uh, pushing hard every day to become a better person. <laughs> Entering into another world, but what I told them, I said, look, I don't know anything about all this, so why don't you, I'm gonna put a mic and you're gonna explain your story. You're gonna just, you're gonna be alone in one room and you're just gonna explain your whole story, but you have to imagine that there might be like a little French guy like me at the other side of the planet who can hear this and I need to understand the context. And basically what we did after we created a free app, which is called JR Murals, and uh, you click on Teha Chapi and then you can click on any person. And there's also victims in that picture of people who have forgave and who uh, also recorded their story. There's also guards. So you see, you hear all points of views. You'll see that in the show because I've put a lot of those snap videos that I was taking with Instagram, which is interesting because they let me use my phone in the jail. People were reacting and asking questions and he was responding to it, so there was a real dialogue, 
which was incredible for them and I'm sure also for the people on the other side. We speak with them regularly, we exchange data, we phone calls. They know that this show is happening. They very excited and also, you know, uh, curious to know how people perceive the story, especially on the other side of the Atlantic. So, you know, it's, it's not a disconnected world. The, the, this project creates a, a bridge. It's very interesting to see. It's like a small experience into a world that has been abandoned, that suddenly reconnect with the world. I think humanity is there, but sometimes it's getting hidden by all those strong concrete walls and all those facilities built in a way that you remove humanity from people. And the gods would say it openly, and they say that they don't see the inmates as humans, but uh, they see them as animals, and that project have helped them seeing them as humans again. It was really something that, uh, at the speed of light, you see how you can restore humanity. And art is a great excuse for that.